Welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. If you check out that radiator removal video, there's great detail on this overflow bottle and all this stuff. Got the radiator inlet and outlet hoses. This is the main reason, besides helping other people out, that I made these videos so I can remember where all this stuff goes. I did pick up a new washer for the radiator drain port. If I had a sand blaster and a powder coater, I would just do that. That might be ideal, but I'll have to do it the low budget way. Just wire brush, sandpaper, scotch bright. And then I'll just paint it with this. I had this left over from something black engine enamel. So I have this little radiator piece cleaned up pretty well. It's not super perfect, but you're not going to see it. And I've got all the oil and grease and grit and grime off. I'm just going to squirt a little isopropyl alcohol on this rag and then wipe it off. So just get a scrap of cardboard. You get a piece of wire and just bend a hook in it. And you can hang this and spray paint it all at once and let it dry. Make sure you shake your paint good one minute after the little ball starts rattling. So I just clamped it in my vise to dry overnight. All right, this has been drying overnight. I'm gonna reinstall the radiator stay right here. Install a tiny drop of Loctite. Definitely looks a lot better painted. That'll go there, a little 10 millimeter socket. It would have been easier to put this extension on first, but I'm going to need it for the torque wrench anyway. So tighten that to 10 newton meters. If you watch the radiator removal video, y'all remember I had a broken grommet here. If I put a new one in, you basically just kind of have to force it through the hole because it's just a half donut sandwich, and that mounts right here slides on. I put my mounting hardware in this bag so I could find it later. Two bolts and then this special bracket that holds the clutch cable. So theoretically if you're doing this valve adjustment job you can just pivot the radiator on this. Taking out these two bolts and then that fan wire went up under here and there's a description in, in the other video about that. So I re-watched my radiator removal video last night. And I know this little bracket held the cable like this. You got to get this little nub into the rubber grommet. So we'll slide the radiator on like this. Onto there. I have a little liquid grease I'm just going to put on here just so it slides in easier. Now this will slide into here, and then it'll go, you got to spin it to get this little tab underneath, and then it should drop in over here. So on the radiator removal video, remember this little hole has to go on this plastic tab there. Now if I can just get this little tab in here, back to the other side. And then if you make sure this fan wire goes down in here, they're there like that, then it'll fall forward enough for you. And then this wire is going to go like that. So I'm real close. This bolt's almost lined up. And over here, it's real close. Now I can reach around and push here. And on that rubber thing on the other side, you can probably see my hand. So that's on there good. So now I can spin in this left bolt here. Spin in the right bolt now. Make sure you don't cross thread it. So I'll finish spinning these in, tighten them down. That's good, nice and snug. There we go, one radiator installed. Now we just have to do the hoses down below. I'm going to be reinstalling the radiator outlet hose. I'm just going to pull this little 
rag out of here that I had in there to catch drips. So it'll go back on like this. So to slide it on. Make sure it's all in all the way. The other end will attach up here. So I'll slide this up. There's actually a place where it used to be. I'm just going to put it back in the same spot. That feels good. So this bottom clamp, if you adjust the distance here on your channel lock, you can get it to fit on here just perfect. Put it right in the notch there. Grab it up on top. And you should be able to squeeze this all the way down. Oops. Usually... So it's not squeezing enough, so I'm going to have to do it a little bit more. I'm just going to move this back one notch. And try that. There we go. Kind of wiggle it up to where it was. And once it's lined up, let go. I'll spin this down. I don't want it to hit the exhaust and I don't want to hit oil filter, so I'd say right there's a good spot. This radiator inlet hose has some kind of a dust in here. I'm just going to wipe that out. Okay, that's better. Go ahead and remove this other rag I had in there. Make sure everything's clean. I already cleaned this off once. I'm just double checking. I already looked in here and cleaned inside there. And I've already wiped this off, but I'm just wiping it off again, making sure. Looks good. This has a little dent in the rubber right there, so I'm going to, when I tighten it, I'm gonna just going to put it in the same spot like that. So let's get this one back on. Here. That's good. Grab the Phillips. Was right here. You catch one edge on the back like that, then you can hook it over and slide it on. I can tell by those dents that I showed you. Actually, that's a good place for it right back there out of the way. Just have to reattach this hose. Goes back in here and under some stuff. Refer to the radiator removal video for routing. And it'll come out and attach here. So I fed it up from the other side where I showed you. Now I've just got to squeeze this clamp right here. And I can slide this up when I'm done. I've got to hook it up onto here. I'm going to spin these down to the bottom. Like that. And I'll be able to slide it up and onto this port. Make sure it's on all the way. There we go, that's on all the way. We're going to have to get a screwdriver on the top. So this is that fan motor wire that's blocking our view. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in and then go finish pulling that little hose clamp forward. So that fan wire went up under here to get this side to align to this little hook right there. When you go to take this off later, remember to push right here with your finger. That's how you get it apart. That's good and snug. So I bought this little screwdriver in about 1985 Craftsman. Made in USA. Now I can squeeze this with the pliers and then take this little screwdriver on the top and hopefully that'll can push with the screwdriver and pull with the pliers. I don't know why it's being so difficult. There we go. I'll just let go. That's good. Final thing I'm going to do on this video is reinstall this overflow bottle. I'm not going to go into great detail because if you look at my video 
radiator cap removal and overflow bottle starting at three minutes and 38 seconds. It'll show you exactly where everything goes. So I'm going to refer back to my own video. And one trick I found out on YouTube in general. So I'm watching my video and it, I want to watch it faster. You can just tap down here on this gear and hit playback speed double. So now you can get through it faster. So one thing I learned by taking this apart is you kind of see this part on the outside. But when you take that off, and it almost ends up just hanging on this thing. So this cap just is like a rubber cap and it just goes on like this. So and here's the hose going up. And it, you can almost just hang it like that and then put the cover on. So before you put that cap on, put this on here first. Kind of just pry it up over like that. And then you would put the bottle in like this. Then you'll feed this hose through this hole. And when you go to put the black cover on, it's got to go like this. So once this is hanging off the bike, the black cover would slide into this notch here. And then put the hose right here. Then it comes around, stuffs into this hole right there. Like that. So now you can slide this hose up here like this and slide it up on this rip by the radiator cap where we took it off there and pinch this little thing. Slide it up and let go. Usually easiest is to get an Allen key like this. And then you can spin it and apply pressure at the same time. So this little plastic bushing just falls out on you. So I'll cut it a little bit thinner. Then I'm just going to go half a wrap. See if this will hold it. There's the bottle falling in the way. Yeah, that seems like that'll hold it. So just spin this down loosely with a five millimeter. The last thing is this little hose clamp, which will go here around that and cinch it down. So that's it for reinstalling the radiator. On the next video, I'm going to be filling it with new coolant.